Happy Friday. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Today. Here on Sports Grid from Craig Mish, along with David Mack. We got you covered for the next hour. Talking some fantasy football with you today. Our preview is of the New England Patriots. Very intriguing team into the season. But David, we had our night of college football. What did you think? Opening night. Come and gone. I mean, it was uh, it was pretty good, right? I mean, it's just it's just fantastic to have it on TV in general. It's nice to have the uh, the sport back. It's it's feeling a little bit like fall, you know. It got down got down in in my neck of the woods to about seventy five degrees last night, so can't uh, can't complain too hard about that. And uh, yeah, we got more games tonight. More games on Saturday. The uh, the University of Kansas plays tonight in one of the only games they're going to win this season. So uh, you know it's it's always it's always nice to see uh, a school from Kansas win a couple games. So uh, here we are tonight. We have the uh, you know we we got lots going on. We're going to be covering we're going to be covering the New England Patriots today in our continued fantasy football series. And Craig is going to go ahead and lead us into today's headlines. All right, so let's get started here on the show on this Friday. Penn State in the final minute ends up scoring. Boy, it would have been an embarrassing result for them at Purdue. Really exciting back and forth game in the Big Ten. Go figure that one as they end up picking up the four point win. Oh my gosh, bad beat for Purdue if you backed them yesterday. Spencer Strider strikes out 16 last night, sets a franchise record. In the win for the Atlanta Braves, amazing performance for him. Titans linebacker Harold Landry is going to miss the season with a torn ACL. And Davis, we probably should begin with the trade that happened in the NBA yesterday as well. Several players headed over, of course, to the Utah Jazz. I think you predicted this very early on in the offseason. Spider Mitchell has been traded. Boy, Cleveland has done a really nice job over the last couple of years rebuilding this thing. They really have. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of loath to criticize the teams that go for it, right? That's sort of how I feel about the NBA today. I think, you know, maybe some people are like, ah, you know, they gave up a lot. They don't have a ton of roster flexibility. They don't have a ton of cap space. The only asset they have left to trade is a 2024 pick swap. And, and this is pretty much their team, right? Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Isaac Okoro, and Ricky Rubio are, are pretty much their pieces. And the guys they add after that, it's going to be better in minimums, undrafted free agents, second round picks. And you know what? I, I think it's pretty cool to see the Cleveland Cavaliers sans LeBron James try to be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And are they one of the four best teams? You know, probably not, right? Not as good as the Celtics, not as good as the Nets on paper, not as good as the Bucks. So it'll be interesting to see them try and play that double big lineup, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen against some of these incredible teams who have, you know, centers who can shoot three-pointers. And the, probably the, the biggest surprise here is that Donovan Mitchell was not traded to the New York Knicks. The reporting was right. basically the Knicks did not want to give up R.J. Barrett. They also did not want to give up Quentin Grimes, their young shooting guard who had a really strong season last year. And if they weren't going to give up those guys, and it was about, you know, quickly and Mitchell Robinson, and they only wanted to give up two unprotected first round picks, then Danny Ainge was going to say, you know what, I think I can do better. And, uh, you know, Danny Ainge, uh, Danny Ainge kind of manages his teams like I do my dynasty fantasy football league teams. He's much better at going into the tank than at building a true winner. You know, it's a lot easier to just be like, I'm going to get all these picks. I'm going to get all these assets than it is to build a winner. But uh, I'm very excited to see this Cleveland team, you know, get on the court, basically. Yeah, me too. All right, uh, let's let's quickly hit on New England. What do you think of the Patriots' broad view before we get to the micro view coming up? Yeah, I'm very worried. I am very worried about the New England Patriots. I think that uh, Josh McDaniels is a phenomenal offensive coordinator I think that Bill Belichick does kind of coach like a 70 year old coach you know I think that the thing that Bill Belichick was great with the longest time was he grinded the edges right he knew uh when to go for it he knew you know uh, like just all these different things and you know what pretty much every team in the NFL does that now you know pretty much every team is kind of caught up with the micro edges that the Patriots used to do and now they don't have Great skill position players, right? I mean, Mac Jones is fine, and I think the running backs are good, but they're very slow. They're paying a lot of money to Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry, who were, you know, pretty ambivalent additions to that offense. And now Josh McDaniels is gone, and according to reports, Joe Judge and Matt Patricia, 
to uh, total failures outside of the organization, right? No way you can frame that as just complete and total failure from those two guys outside of the organization. And now those are the guys calling plays. So I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about the defense. I think they'll always be a good defensive team, right? That's just what Bill Belichick does. But I'm really worried about their offense's ability to generate points, especially with Tyquan Thornton, their speedy second-round rookie wide receiver, suffering a broken collarbone in the preseason. All right, we'll take a deeper dive into the New England Patriots coming up right here on Fantasy Sports Today on Sports Grid. So stay on the grid for that. Also, we'll have some fantasy or reality in the Sports Grid 60 as well. As we cap you off here on this Friday, getting ready for draft weekend, Labor Day weekend for a lot of you coming up here on Sports Grid. Make sure you stay on the grid throughout the day today. And tonight, we got college football again tonight, college football again tomorrow. And then it's the final weekend before the NFL begins on Thursday of next week. So we'll take a quick time out here on the show. New England Patriots, year two, without Tom Brady. Will it look any better than it did in year one? Running backs, receivers, we'll give you the average draft position and preview the Patriots next, right here on Fantasy Sports Today. So stay on the grid. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with our Pats preview in 2022. Don't go away. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, and coast to BBG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game yeah, live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. But who do you think, Kevin Walsh, is the best wideout in all the National Football League? Oh, boy. So I, I think we often lean towards it, Avante Adams. I, I think it's sort of the most fascinating conversations because it feels like the answer to who's the best wideout changes quite often. One thing I always feel yeah. like I can revert back to, though, on someone who's not uh, near the top of this board and pretty much has no chance to have the most receiving yards due to a six game suspension is DeAndre Hopkins. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. So speaking of hurt, Dalvin Cook, that's been his story the last few years. But certainly when he's on the field, the way I like to describe Dalvin Cook, Davis, is that when I'm playing against Dalvin Cook and I don't have him in fantasy and I know he's fully healthy, I'm worried. I'm worried going into that week because I know he's going to have a good game. Over 1,000 yards last year and six rushing touchdowns. Another top 10 pick for Dalvin Cook. But my guess is, uh, Davis, that this may be the last time we see Dalvin Cook. Go in. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Haro and so the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Gambling progress in Albania. Yeah, we owe it to our viewers to talk about other countries as well. Three years ago, they were just like Eastern Europe and the rest of Europe and the U.S. after the Supreme Court decision, as prolific as they possibly could be to maximize revenue and the like. 2019, change of administration, politics ground to a halt and the legal issues as well. And since the state controls all of the internet, all of the media, they went from having necessity of gambling to totally illegal almost overnight. Well, what does it take? International pressure, the big companies, Albanians' robust population, and maybe more important than anything else, they need the money like everybody else. So just as quickly as it evaporates, if you want to bet and go to Albania, you're gonna be successful. Right. 
Well, Davis is very worried about the New England Patriots from a fantasy perspective here in 2022. Naturally, their defense could carry them in several games. It just is going to depend on how effective they're going to be running the ball and if Mac Jones can take the next step. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the average draft position in the NFFC for the New England Patriots here in 2022. We have Mac Jones at 181, so essentially not a starter in fantasy going into the season in a 12-team league. Superflex, obviously a starter. Damian Harris, a seventh or eighth round pick. Ramondre Stevenson, a little bit later, ninth round pick approximately. They added Devontae Parker in the offseason, not being drafted. Jacoby Myers, essentially not being drafted. And then Hunter Henry, uh, is uh, you know a borderline starting tight end in fantasy, probably right on that fringe of 12, 13, maybe a bye week fill in. Uh, but naturally, Davis, the story for the Patriots last year were the first handful of games that Mac Jones played in, and he looked fantastic. And then you realize teams get film on you in the NFL and they get your tendencies. They They actually ran the ball pretty effectively for most of the season with the two guys that they had, but very clearly as the season went on, uh, you know, Belichick got a little out Belichick, I think, by opposing defense. They figured out how to stop Mac Jones, and they did it. Now he has to make the adjustment to get back to what he was in the first half of last year. Yeah, I mean, they started out the season losing to the Dolphins, uh, losing to the Saints, losing to the Buccaneers. Then uh, from week 7 to week 13, they did not lose a game. They beat the Chargers. They absolutely clobbered the Browns. They beat the number one seed Tennessee Titans, and they also won – that uh, that horrible uh remember that that buffalo bills game you know it was awful Oof. it was the the wind I, I think mac jones only threw three passes in that game you know mac jones he he was fine he did only throw 521 passes last season just a shade over uh 3800 yards and you know that's just kind of who mac jones is i i think he is i mean i think he's very accurate honestly kind of similar to tua where you're a little bit worried about his athleticism in terms of, you know, being able to escape the pocket and kind of make things happen outside of the structure of the offense. But, you know, very unlike Zach Wilson and Justin Fields and Trey Lance, you're not worried about his ability to just carry out whatever the offensive coordinator is telling him to do. You know, if the play comes in right. and he's got three reads, he's going to make the read, he's going to deliver the ball for fantasy I mean, and, and best ball, sure, whatever, fine. You know, he's very cheap. Uh, he's, he's, there's no threat of him getting, you know, bench for, for uh, I, Jared Stidham's not even on the roster anymore. So I suppose it would be Brian Hoyer. Like there's, there's no threat of that, but I, I'm not anticipating Mac Jones, you know, taking a, a, the next step in terms of statistical production. Now, maybe he will play better this season, right? Higher accuracy, better yards per attempt, but I just don't think, the Patriots are going to play very fast. I don't think they're going to throw down the field very much. So in terms of fantasy, just not really that interested in, in Mac Jones. Yeah, it makes some sense. And and obviously the where you're going to be drafting Patriots is going to be at the running back position because as unfortunate, Davis, as they've been at the wide receiver position, it feels like they have their you-know-what together at the running back position. Two viable running backs, once again, entering the season. Let's talk about Damian Harris first. Now, obviously... Uh, there are some that feel like Ramondre Stevenson could potentially be the guy this this year, and he's going essentially 20 picks later. Uh, but regardless of how good Stevenson is, this is Belichick. These are running backs, Davis. And if history is going to prove anything, we know that these guys are both going to get action this year. Yeah, and uh, in a lot of the drafts I've done, you know, recently, last two weeks, last three weeks, Ramondre Stevenson has been going ahead of Damian Harris, and I think that is, uh, you know, completely and totally justified. Damian Harris has never had more than two receptions in a game. We already saw, you know, we 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 already saw Ramondre do that. I think it was his third game ever where he was already operating as the passing down back. Brandon Bolden left the team. He was playing passing downs last year. He went to the Raiders, James White retired with that hip injury. And and the thing that is, you know, really catapulted Ramondre higher in the rankings is that Ty Montgomery suffered an ankle injury in the preseason. And, you know, it, it seems crazy to be talking about 30-year-old Ty Montgomery, but that's just kind of how the Patriots do things. They love to have a guy in that role. More recently, what we've been hearing, though, is that, Ramon, he, you know, Bill Belichick kind of has been comping Ramondre's role to the Shane Vereen, Kevin Falk, Rex Burkhead style role in that offense. I do think, though, that uh, Damian Harris, it's it's pretty hilarious because 
how how much has fantasy football changed? You know, five years ago, Damian Harris scores 15 touchdowns. I mean, Craig, that's a second round pick. Guy scores 15 yeah. touchdowns. Yeah. He is going right up at the top of those drafts again, right? We have really changed the way we evaluate players in fantasy football because Damian Harris uh, just does not catch the ball. He's been in the NFL for three seasons. He has 23 receptions, right? Which is, you know, for where you're taking him now, I actually think both Patriots running backs look like a value where they're going now. Because Ramondre, I think, can be a superstar, but he's not going to put Damian Harris to the bench entirely, right? They're just, unless Damian gets hurt, right? That that really would be the only way. So I think, honestly, Damian, you know, ninth, 10th round, fine selection, especially on teams where like week one, you're sitting there, you know, kind of the way I draft teams is like, I just need someone who can get me 11 points sometimes. And I think Damian has you know a good chance of doing that. Yeah, and, and actually the upside probably a little bit more for Ramondre Stevenson, who uh, rushed for five touchdowns last year and uh, just 600 rushing yards. And he's being essentially taken as an RB2 in, in most leagues. He's the 36th running back off the board, flex and some others, ninth round in fantasy football. I, I guess the trepidation maybe that some people have, Davis, and it is fair when you take the New England running backs, is you simply are going to have a week from Ramondre Stevenson and probably Damian Harris at some point where it's a zero. Something happens. They miss a block. There's a fumble. They drop a pass, and they're just gone for the rest of the game. I mean, this is the M.O. for Belichick. But over the course of the season, the counting numbers are going to be there. It's just on a week-to-week basis, it's going to be dangerous for both these guys. And both could be stars. Um, you know, again, both could be zeros on any given week. Hard to say. I mean, we we did this with Ramondre last season, right? He's active in week one. Gets a, gets a target on his very first snap in the NFL. Then he gets a carry on his next snap. What happens? He fumbles it, goes to the bench. He is a healthy scratch for the next three weeks while J.J. Taylor is active. J.J. Taylor, by the way, waived by the New England Patriots. Another you know small little signal that they do really like Ramondre. Uh, then he comes back and plays a little bit in week five and week six. Uh, I, I believe he went on the COVID list. And then... After that stretch, I mean, he he really had a great stretch. He had 20 for 100 yards and two touchdowns against Cleveland. Uh, kind of transitioned into being the passing down back in a in in that game as well, and finished out the year with a 100 yard two touchdown game against Jacksonville. I really what it comes down to is Ramondre is just kind of the more dynamic, shifty guy, and Damian Harris is the You need three and a half yards, I'll get you three and a half yards. You need five yards, I'll get you three and a half yards. You need one yard, I'll get you three and a half yards. Like that's, which has a total role inside the Patriot system. I I don't want anyone to come away from me saying, you know, Ramondre Stevenson is a target. I'm taking him even as he's getting more expensive. I don't want people to take that as Damian Harris is a bad player or Damian Harris won't play. It's just that the preseason has really fallen in such a way with all these injuries and the James White retirement and thing like, it's just falling kind of perfectly, honestly, for both of these guys. I would agree. Uh, uh, any other running backs to mention, by the way, before we go uh, over to receivers and tight ends next segment? So they have this, well, I mean, one, Ty Montgomery, if, if, if he is not seriously injured, and of course it's the Patriots, very tight-lipped, we, we don't have an update. But if Ty Montgomery is not healthy, they have this guy, Pierre Strong, who was uh, an FCS player. Uh, who is ostensibly their like kind of backup passing down back. He's on their practice squad. But if Ty Montgomery is hurt, I think that he he may be active in week one of the season. And, you know, just the Patriots running backs is a name to monitor. Yeah, Pierre Strong. Sounds like 800 yards and seven touchdowns this season. Pierre Strong running back. To New England. <laughs> yep. Is Giovanni Bernard still out there? I feel like they'll sign him too. All right, uh, coming up next, we dive into the receivers and tight ends and get you ready for your draft with the names like Devontae Parker and Hunter Henry. So stay on the grid as our Patriots continue right after this. Don't go away. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. 
Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you. There's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. You know, I don't think I can quite get to taking him over Cooper Cup, but I definitely do think there is a, a very solid argument. And, and average draft position agrees with taking him over Jamar Chase. You know, Chase also plays with another absolutely phenomenal wide receiver in T. Higgins. Uh, Adam Thielen is a good wide receiver, but I think at this stage in his career is definitely better suited for being a, a complimentary piece. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, Learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. The A series was laughable. And then uh, again, they lost to the Angels that series. Now it's down to six, and they head to Tampa for three starting Friday, and their lead is only six. If they get swept, they could get down to three by Monday morning. Since I've been on with you doing this, I've been telling you that the Yankees are, you know, just simply built for the regular season, and it looks like they're just built for the first half of the season. The Sports Grid Network. Our preview of the New England Patriots from a fantasy football perspective continues here on Fantasy Sports Today. Boy, how times have changed since Tom Brady left. To go to Tampa Bay, Mac Jones and company leading the charge. Let's take a look at the average draft position once again of several players that you could be considering taking this weekend. We'll give you too high or too low on a lot of these players. You know, naturally, they have a couple of really good running backs in Stevenson and Harris, but we're going to focus more on the tight ends and receivers here with Hunter Henry Devontae Parker, and uh, Jacoby Myers. Now, this has been the kryptonite for the Patriots, Davis, through the years. They just had Tom Brady, and so it just didn't matter who they had at wide receiver, right? They had Deion Branch, and they had Troy Brown, they had Randy Moss for that one or two years, whatever it was. But their draft picks have just been really dismal. And I, I actually like the fact that they went out and got Devontae Parker. He's probably their most talented receiver. That yeah, he is definitely their most talented wide receiver in terms of, like, you put that guy on an island, he goes to go win the ball. But does Devontae Parker still have the juice? I mean, at, at this point, I would maybe think that uh, that he doesn't. Uh, and, and to be honest, I think I've probably done about 400 drafts this offseason, best ball, manage, you know, all kinds of formats. And I just do not think that I've taken Devontae Parker, mostly because I don't think he is a particularly good stylistic fit for the New England Patriots offense and for Mac Jones. If we look at who led the team in targets last season, it, uh, it was all guys who played on the inside 
of the field. Jacoby Myers, 126 targets. Hunter Henry, Kendrick Bourne, Nelson Aguilar had 64 targets. And I do wonder if Aguilar is actually the guy who is going to be the most dominant outside wide receiver. I think they drafted Tyquan Thornton to fill that role, right? But to me, Parker... It, and Parker also goes in a range where I think every name that goes around him is more interesting, right? Garrett Wilson, the rookie for the Jets. George Pickens, the rookie for the Steelers. Wandale Robinson, KJ Hamler. I mean, I think all of those guys have more of a ceiling. And, you know, if you are if you are stuck at a point in your draft where you're taking Devontae Parker because you just, like, really need a guy you can maybe start in week one, I, I think you've kind of lost the plot Anyways, you know, I draft these teams and I, I think optimal strategy is really just having like five really, really good wide receivers and then two or three bench guys who could be good, you know, some ceiling guys like Parker just doesn't fit with what I would consider optimal roster construction. And I mean, you got to watch him in Miami last year. Like it just it does not seem like he is the same guy who finished wide receiver 11 in 2020. Like something is wrong with his surgically repaired knee, I think. I, I think he will have a lot of touchdowns for the Patriots and not much else. That would be my projection. Going in the end that. zone, jumping up, catching the ball, six touchdowns. Yeah, I could definitely I could definitely see that. I mean, he is a, a more dominant red zone style wide receiver. I think the the issue he could run into, I mean, I guess what what I would project would be is Hunter Henry gonna be the primary red zone guy? Or is Devontae Parker going to be the red zone guy? And then again, you know, don't forget, they are paying uh, Jonu Smith $16.5 million per year. He's the fifth highest paid tight end in football. Uh, there, there was just a news item, uh, funnily enough, right as we began the show, that the New England Patriots converted some of Jonu Smith's 2022 and 2023 salary into a signing bonus. Uh, why would they do that? Because uh, the John o. Smith experiment has not really worked out, and it would be easier uh, for them to cut him next season. I guess, I guess, where I would end with Devontae Parker would be I probably like him a little bit better in best ball leagues where I'm not forced to think about him. Right? It's like if he has a two touchdown game, great, I get it. In a managed league, I actually think I like uh, his two teammates at wide receiver more. All right, so let's go over to Hunter Henry at tight end, Davis. Naturally, this may be the one interesting target for uh, Mac Jones. Yeah, I mean, Hunter Henry is actually pretty interesting. He had uh, he led the team in receiving touchdowns last season. And Hunter Henry, also one of those guys, I mean, we do this with tight ends all the time, but when tight ends are drafted pretty high, Hunter Henry was drafted pretty high, 35th overall, second round by then, the San Diego Chargers. He's had multiple injuries. Um, you know, he had he had the, the torn ACL, then he came back for the playoff game, then he switched teams. And he did only generate 75 targets last season, but turned those into nine touchdowns. And that, I think, would probably be the limiting factor for Devontae Parker is Hunter Henry is just going to be better at that role than Devontae Parker is. And Hunter Henry goes in a region of the draft where – there just is not that much else going on around him. It's like a lot of the rookie wide receivers are going to kind of be picked thin, and then it'll be the guys you're you're hoping and praying on, you know, the, the Hamlers, the KJ Osborns who we talked about yesterday. And, you know, in, in a tight end premium league, I think he's a really good second tight end. If you miss out on that elite group, if you don't take Kelsey, Kittle, Waller, Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, I mean, is there really, a, to me, there is not really a difference between Dalton Schultz who goes in like, the sixth round and Hunter Henry. I mean, Hunter Henry really didn't even have a good target season last year and had only 195 less yards than Dalton Schultz. So I, I think he is pretty, pretty interesting. All right. So uh, that's our look at the Patriots and, you know, obviously not a ton of pre. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby, pre Jacoby yeah, Myers is the other is uh, Jacoby Myers is interesting. Um, he's kind of like the reverse of the type of guy I like to draft in fantasy football. You know, how do you, how do you win your week in fantasy football? I mean, a lot of the times, uh, I mean, Craig, you've been playing the game for a long time. You know, this most fantasy football games are not close. You know, how often are you sitting there on the league page and you're like, Oh man, I just need one more catch from this guy. And how do you blow your opponents out or how do you lose by a lot? It's, it's all touchdown volatility. Jacoby Myers is entering into his third season in the NFL. He has 248 targets and he has two touchdowns to show 
for his time. Now, is part of that, like, is he is he running a little bad? Is he getting a little bit unlucky? Sure, yeah, he's getting a little bit unlucky. But pretty clearly, the Patriots do not view him as the style of player who is going to be a key part of their red zone offense. I think that's why they paid Hunter Henry and Johnny Smith all that money. I think that's probably why they did, you know, the, the third round pick for Devontae Parker. Myers is, I mean, really, he is just in that Julian Edelman, Danny Amendola, Wes Welker role in that offense where he, he basically never gets further than 10 yards away from the line of scrimmage. He runs these hooks, he runs these curls, he runs these digs, he turns around, he catches the ball, and uh, and he lays, you know, he, he lays down. And so, again, I do, uh, if, if, you, if you do end up happening to draft a team in which you are, you know, pretty running back heavy, you know, let's say you, you start your draft with Najee Harris, Alvin Kamara, maybe you take a stab on Zeke, David Montgomery, and you just are, are pretty thin at the wide receiver position. Uh, I also would not be surprised to see Myers start the season pretty hot because there's a lot of unfamiliarity with these pass catchers for the New England Patriots. You know, Devontae Parker is new to the team. They don't really know what Johnny Smith's role is. I think the team was honestly, uh, given the reports, I think they were planning on starting Tyquan Thornton from week one. Nelson Aguilar was not having a very good camp. And the Kendrick Bourne stuff from New England Patriots camp was all bad. They were... They were just like, you know, Kendrick Bourne's been really quiet. He's got these drops. We got these reports from Patriots training camp that Thornton looked really good, that he was beating some of the Patriots' best corners one-on-one, getting open. And then they go to the second preseason game. They come out of it. Tyquan, and Tyquan Thornton actually did score a long touchdown in their first preseason game, you know, kind of building that myth up a little bit more. Then in week two of the preseason, he suffers this collarbone injury. He goes on the IR. Uh, I mean, if it was me, broken collarbone, I'm thinking like, yeah, probably shut me down for the year. I probably do not, uh, don't want to get hit going across the middle by, uh, you know, Jordan Poyer or whatever, if I'm coming back from a broken collarbone, but these guys are built to different stuff. He probably will be back. Uh, but in general, I think the right way to approach the Patriots wide receivers, again, you know, I'm wrong about things all the time, but this is, I can only give my approach. It would be to probably pass on Devonte Parker George Pickens seems better. Wondell Robinson seems better. KJ Hamler seems better. Chase Claypool. You know, there are a lot of guys there who have some decent ceiling where Parker is going. And I think there is, per- I, it, I, I honestly don't view drafting Devontae Parker that different than drafting David Montgomery or Ezekiel Elliott, where it's like, I can totally see the volume this guy is going to get week one, but then you kind of fail to see the forest for the trees, which is what happens if Jonah Smith is actually good. What happens if this offense is not very good and, you know, we just end up wanting to, you know, run the ball a ton or we end up not being that efficient on offense. You know, we don't end up scoring a ton of touchdowns or Mac Jones takes a step back or the Joe Judge, Matt Patricia experiment completely fails. And so for that reason, I'm out on Parker. I'm relatively in on Jacoby Myers compared to what he costs. He's obviously better in full PPR platforms versus half point. PPR or in in standard leagues, you know, because we're not anticipating a ton of touchdowns coming for Myers. And then in terms of like last round selections, probably not in manage, you know, no, if you're setting your lineup every week, you're never going to feel comfortable starting Nelson Aguilar or Kendrick Bourne. But in best ball leagues, Aguilar, Bourne, even Thornton, I think they're all sort of fine options, but haven't even really mentioned his name in terms of a fantasy option. But Jonu Smith, I, I don't know what I don't know what is happening, but according to the beat writers, he uh, he was second in Patriots training camp in targets from Mac Jones, which is at least relatively interesting to me. You know, because he was so athletic, he scored nine touchdowns his final season in Tennessee. You you definitely and and the Patriots, you know, with this two tight end offense, we've had Gronk and Hernandez and Ben Watson and all these great tight ends in the Belichickian system. So I could definitely see it happening. In general, though, not a passing game that we are overly enthused about. Guys, we're going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on the show. When we return, Craig will hopefully rejoin me for a game of fantasy or reality. See you then. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College National football today. Alabama in winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two years away. When this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of In-game injuries. Line, but you take all the points, access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In I'm game go. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. Well, boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. I don't know how it's going to work out for him, but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier in his career, he would have gotten out. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career. So it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Kev, how do you evaluate the Vikings entering 2022? I think there's optimism around this group. How much of it is tied to pessimism around Green Bay? That's probably in the eye of the beholder. But I think this is a talented football team, and I think there's absolute opportunities on this schedule. But the more important thing than maybe being favored in 10 of those games, Ben, is only twice you will see them a dog over a field goal, three and a half plus. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. What do you think of his deal that they gave him today? I thought it was good to get him locked in and to help the, with the salary cap so that the team can manage it over the next several years. If you want the guy, it's good to get him locked in. And obviously, Russell Wilson, in my opinion, is worth every penny. Prior to that last season, he was number one in EPA, number one in yards per attempt, tied for the most uh, passing touchdowns in the NFL. The Sports Grid Network. Our social media is the place to be this weekend. First full weekend of college football. Follow us on Twitter at SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV for the latest news, notes, picks against the spread. Of course, latest information, videos from all of our hosts. And if you have a question for us on Fantasy Reality, make sure you use the hashtag Fantasy or Reality and copy us there uh, on the show, no doubt. So, uh, Davis, lots of college football going on this weekend. I know your team is in action as well. I know you're excited for that. My team is in action too. My Gators uh, and a home underdog on Saturday night. I never thought I'd live to see the day, but here we are. Should be a fun weekend of college football, huh? It should be a great weekend of college football. This is honestly probably like the most I'm going to be locked in, you know, because I'm not having to sweat anything with uh, with the NFL the next day. I'll, I Definitely what I will be doing on Saturday is a combination of finishing as many best ball drafts as I can and watching college football there are uh there are some good ones i mean honestly we have uh we have some good ones tonight too i'm excited for uh illinois indiana that one uh that one is generally pretty good but we have clemson georgia tech on monday night notre dame ohio state uh you know we're getting this like that's i'm just excited i just i love having football back on on my tv it is it is the best man you simply cannot complain yeah, for sure. All day Saturday and, uh, you know, late into Labor Day games, too. Should be a fun weekend, no doubt. All right, let's uh, wrap up our show today. Before we do that, though, it's time for us to discuss some fantasy or reality. All 
All right, Davis, let's talk about the college football national championship. Georgia got the everything off their back last season. The Bulldogs have been really good through the years. Just winning that championship has sort of eluded them uh, recently. Uh, not last year. They win the college football national championship. A lot of players also coming back for them this year. Of course, Alabama's going to be very good. So will Ohio State. And I'm sure there'll be some team that we're not talking about yet to jump into that college football playoff. Fantasy reality, Davis, the Bulldogs will win the national championship this year and repeat. Uh, you know what? I got I got fantasy. Um, one, it's just very hard to do in general. Two, this Alabama team is unbelievable. You know, Heisman, Heisman quarterback, amazing. I, they just, Alabama's always great, right? And uh, I wonder, I, I don't I wonder your opinion on this. Like uh, Stetson Bennett, he uh, I, I would say he like he seems fine. For a college quarterback, but he is not, he's not CJ Stroud. He's not Bryce Young. I mean, he's not even Tua or Jalen Hurts, right? From their time at Alabama, the way that Georgia was able to win was via defense. And they did lose a lot of those incredible defensive players to the NFL draft. Now, does Georgia behind every single uh, guy who just went in the first round of the NFL draft, did they have another five-star recruit who is the best player in his home state at his position in high school. Absolutely. I mean, they are just a factory of defense. If you're a young kid wanting to get drafted, you go to Georgia. So I'm not saying the Georgia defense is going to be bad, but it is kind of hard to be as good on defense as they were. The Georgia defense last year was suffocating. I mean, they put, they put Alabama in a headlock and very yep. rarely do you see the Alabama offense put in a headlock with, you know, J Jameson Williams and John Mechie and, uh, you know, uh, Brian Robinson, all these guys who went in the NFL draft and they, they couldn't get it done against Georgia. But I had, I actually think this year, maybe, maybe a controversial opinion. I actually think Ohio state does it this year and not Alabama because Jackson Smith and Jigba and CJ Stroud, like those guys might go both top five in the NFL draft. And of course they have the, you know, I mean, they, and, and the other thing about Ohio state is, they just get to keep it in cruise control all year because they play this in this, you know, the Big Ten, like such a joke. So I, I think Ohio State does it this year. You know, what's interesting about college football uh, is, is that you already, I mean, look, anything can happen, but you sort of could project already Georgia playing Alabama in the SEC championship yes. and maybe both teams getting in. You know, it's like yeah. so strange that that is, that is the case because the SEC is just the prominent conference in college football. Uh, they will not win the championship again. I thought James Cook and that championship just came alive. A uh, really big reason for why I think they won that thing. I like Bennett as a quarterback, and he's fun to watch. But, uh, yeah, and, and Daniel, I think Daniels may en end up being better than uh, than Bennett in the end. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, fantasy. I, I do not have Georgia winning. Gators will not be as good. Tennessee a little bit better than they were last year. Tennessee will be the interesting team in the East for Georgia this year. All right, Knicks yesterday catching a lot of heat for not acquiring Donovan Mitchell. And naturally, the Knicks uh, up against it. Their win total, I think, is around 500, if I'm not mistaken, over on FanDuel to start the season. And uh, very clearly did not make that big get, that big superstar get. It is not over yet in terms of the offseason. Anything can happen before they report for training camp in a couple of months. Fantasy Reality Davis, the New York Knicks got better this off season. Can we say anything positive about them going into the year? Oh, I can totally say something positive about them. They acquired a bunch of extra first round picks in that trade with Oklahoma city and the trades with Charlotte. They got rid of, uh, they got rid of Kemba Walker. They moved on from Nerland's Noel. I think they, I think they did a lot. They did get at least one of the free agents they really wanted. They really wanted to acquire Jalen Brunson. They hired his dad as a shooting coach. First day of NBA free agency, Jalen Bronson signs on the dotted line. I think that uh, they might attach one of those first round picks to Evan Fournier's contract to remove him from the rotation, remove his money from their, from their books, and they'll be able to start Quentin Grimes. Or honestly, what I would do, and, and you know, I don't think the Knicks as an organization are, are to this point yet, I would just start Jalen Brunson and Emmanuel quickly together. I would just say these guys are so fast. They are so good at shooting. They are they are such phenomenal offensive players. I don't really care that they are going to be a turnstile on defense because I have one of the best rim protecting centers in the NBA, Mitchell Robinson. Now Mitchell Robinson does get into foul trouble quite a bit. Uh, you're you're probably playing him 24 minutes a game, but 
Obi Toppin, Isaiah Hartenstein as their backup five. I mean, Obi Toppin is is really good, and Isaiah Hartenstein was the best backup center in the NBA last season, you know, and, and a lot of people were surprised to see that the Knicks were acquiring him. And a lot of people were surprised that the Clippers let him go. So I think this is, this is undeniable. Uh, they, they signed RJ Barrett to the, the four year contract extension. So he is a, I think a more desirable trade piece now, if they, you know, if they want to go for a superstar, I, I think that, um, you know, the time of laughing at the New York Knicks and being like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. And they just chase every free agent. They, you know, James Dolan is always, you know, putting his thumb on the scout. I think that's over. I think Leon Rose has done a great job with this team this off season. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess the reaction that I'm seeing that may be a little bit unfair. Uh, what, how many games, I don't know how many games they won last year, the Knicks, but I mean, I guess, I guess to answer the question succinctly, did they get better? Will they win? more games than next season like if that was the question i think i would say reality but not by much but your illustration in terms of draft picks obviously that changes things for the future but naturally i guess sort of the issue is is that the knicks are just waiting for that next superstar that next carmelo anthony you know the kevin yeah. durant is playing in brooklyn kyrie irving is playing in brooklyn and it's like i mean these teams are like 30 minutes away from each other and you're playing in the garden and it's and it's just kind of hard to swallow there is no ewing there there is no mega star in new york uh you know these dreams about getting lebron unless they get Bronny in two years i think that is probably over as well uh but but davis makes fair points i was gonna go fantasy but it does sound like the future at least is brighter it just does not seem like the immediate future has a big bump from just getting brunson in the off season so i'll say reality but barely at least for this year all right finally uh in a peloton workout all of a sudden over the last couple of days, uh, Ashton Kutcher does a Peloton workout, and wouldn't you know who shows up to do the workout with him? It is none other than Kim Kardashian, which was a little bit odd, to say the least. Now, naturally, a lot of the things that uh, Kim will do these days is usually associated with single guys, and then we sort of speculate as to who she may end up with in the future, and then we look at the sports books and see who the possibility is. Remember, we did that with the uh the nfl player if i'm not mistaken but ashton kutcher very married has kids the whole nine yards unless i'm missing something here uh fantasy reality davis uh you would do a workout class and i guess we could use peloton for this taught by ashton kutcher and kim kardashian yeah uh no not not for me i'm not a i'm not a workout class guy i uh i work out on my own i like to do my own thing also workout classes generally are designed for people who don't know what they're doing. I've spent uh, a lot of time, honestly, a lot of a, a lot of time that could have been spent, you know, drafting best ball teams or whatever, kind of learning about uh, exercise physiology and like what you should be doing and what your what are actually happening in your muscles when you're doing this. And I like that is a, a reward in and of itself for me. And also, workout classes are really designed to get your heart rate up high which is not what I do when I work out, right? I, I'm mostly lifting weights. I'm taking a long time in between my sets and everything because that's, that's what I like. And, and you know, no, uh, no shade thrown towards people who do like the classes. My wife does the Orange Theory Fitness. Uh, some, of my, mm. some of my buds do the Peloton classes and stuff, and they really enjoy it. They love, you know, beating their uh, maximum output record from the last time and stuff. And I totally, I, I think it's, like, very good, obviously, to challenge yourself and gamify working out because that really does work for people but I'm just not I'm just not a workout class guy I prefer to do my own thing take it at my own pace and I and also you know I work from home so I don't leave the house that much so leaving the house to go to the gym is like that's that's big for me that's my you know that's my trip out of uh, out of my house for the day yeah I mean I'm working clearly from home too doing two shows here on sports grid from my office uh, but I leave the house a lot, Dave. It's naturally you have kids. That's that's kind of the game changer there. So as you said, which is interesting, my wife also likes the online workout shows. I think she subscribes to one, if I'm not mistaken, that's over on YouTube. I say I think because I never know when I'm logging in for her what it is that she's watching. Uh, but for me, I'm, I'm with you, Davis, the same, except for uh, now that I've gotten older, I'm pushing 50 years old. It ain't as important for me with the weights as it is for the cardio that sort of my day to make sure i get that in every day so essentially it is this it is 30 minutes on the treadmill before this show watching uh highlights from what i missed last night usually nba college football or whatever is on 
and uh, then popping in and doing a doing a television show with you. So no, I do not have time, nor am I interested in seeing any of this. But naturally, if this is what gets you going in the morning, who am I to tell you that you should not enjoy a workout with uh, Ashton Kutcher and Kim Kardashian for sure? Uh, all right, so Davis, what's uh, what's on the menu here for you this weekend? A little golf? What do you got? What do you got going on? Come on, man, give it to me. Oh, Saturday, man, Sunday, I, any drafts? Yeah. I, uh, I, 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 I got a lot more drafts left. I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting to that point of, of the, uh, the, the off season where I'm about done. Uh, not, not looking forward as much to every draft. I got a main event left on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, so, so got that, got best ball drafts, but hopefully getting out to golf, Craig, we did our, our annual scramble with me and my buddies from my hometown, you know, but we do it before our fantasy football draft. And I gotta say, I was the hero of the day. Absolutely crushing. Yes. Uh, made made a couple birdies. I was definitely the star of the show. So I have been absolutely itching to get back out and golf. Because, I mean, you know how that is. You play a good round of golf and you're like, I've got it all solved. I got to play as much as I can right now. You know, so so definitely hoping to get. And, you know, once football really gets going, not going to be a ton of golf around here. Yep, agreed for sure. Same with me. All right, we will take a quick time out here on the show. When we come back next, it's time for the Sports Grid 60 as a reminder. 2 o'clock Eastern, I'm right back here with you on Newswire. So make sure you stay on the grid for our Friday edition of the show as we come back and wrap up our week. By the way, we are off on Monday. So no fantasy sports today on Labor Day Monday. We're back again on Tuesday. No go away. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In, in game live prime time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. But who do you think, Kevin Walsh, is the best wideout in all the National Football League? Oh, boy. So I think we often lean towards the Devontae Adams. I think it's one of the most fascinating conversations because it feels like the answer to who's the best wideout changes quite often. One thing I always feel yeah. like I can revert back to, though, on someone who's not uh, near the top of this board and pretty much has no chance to have the most receiving yards due to a six game suspension is DeAndre Hopkins. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. So speaking of hurt, Dalvin Cook, that's been his story the last few years. But certainly when he's on the field, the way I like to describe Dalvin Cook, Davis, is that when I'm playing against Dalvin Cook and I don't have him in fantasy and I know he's fully healthy, I'm worried. I'm worried going into that week because I know he's going to have a good game. Over 1,000 yards last year and six rushing touchdowns. Another top 10 pick for Dalvin Cook. But my guess is, uh, Davis, that this may be the last time we see Dalvin Cook. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I've been here for 25 years. They've had two good seasons, and, and they sucked. Even then, they couldn't get it done. They, they couldn't get it done if the other team didn't show up for the title game. So uh, all I know is they don't win championships, and their quarterback's injured. They're preseason killers. That's what they are. They win every game in a preseason. They beat the Giants. whoop de doo They didn't cover. 
Ain't covered a five. The Sports Grid Network. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports. And one more reminder, we have uh, the weekend off, Davis and I both, for Labor Day. So we'll be back on the show on Tuesday. But that being said, hope you have a great fantasy football weekend. Hope you draft a great team. Davis and I will have our previews of the Jets and Giants coming up next week. Davis, take it away. Here is the Sports Grid 60. So yeah, we are. We are heading into the final draft weekend of the year. This is uh, the NFL specifically created this weekend for us, really. Uh, they, they canceled the last week of the preseason, only three weeks of the preseason this year. And uh, I'm, I'm just sitting here about to do a bunch of drafts this weekend. And honestly, I'm very thankful. I, I kind of thought I would hate it. I kind of enjoyed watching, you know, Samari Torre and, and all the guys who were just total long shots to ever make the roster in the final preseason game but now that i'm sitting here i'm like i got a full weekend to dedicate to college football and drafts and maybe i'll go get a round of golf in. like i i think this should be the new normal for the nfl i don't want them to bring the fourth preseason game back i think three is enough yeah i think so we don't want injuries we want everybody on the field i have my draft my big draft coming up on monday night very excited for that, as well as the big Labor Day weekend. For those of you who are enjoying the long weekend, want to make sure you stay safe out there. And certainly, we look forward to helping you out throughout the fantasy football season, folks. It all begins next Thursday. And here on Sports Grid, we have you covered throughout the both the NFL and college football season. I hope you have a great weekend, and I hope to see you then. That will do it for our show today. Again, thanks to our great rapper. Also, thanks to our producer, Brett Levy, and my co-host, Davis Maddock. Coming up next, it is the early line for the next couple hours, and then I'm back with you for Newswire, 2 o'clock Eastern. We have tons of college football to talk about today, tons of game tonight and tomorrow. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you Tuesday of next week as we get ready for week one of the NFL right here on Fantasy Sports Today on Sports Greg. Again, until then, see ya. Great, great.